Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about data visualization using coronavirus data. Uh, so, let's jump into the blog page for this episode. Uh, data visualization with Plotly, an ultimate guide. First, let's take a look at this plot. Okay, this is a figure uh, titled Confirmed COVID-19 infections in 42 countries or regions as of April 19th, 2020, right? I'm not sure if this is recording per- recorded properly, uh, but it's actually an, an intera- interactive uh, plot. So as you hover over the data points, it shows the hidden information and what each uh, variable means. Okay, so there are four variable four variables embedded in this plot. Uh, first one is x x axis. This one, uh, which is social distance. So how far people stay away from each other, not because of COVID nineteen, but by default, uh, according to the survey done in twenty seventeen. Uh, in centimeter, right? So this is like 60, 60 centimeters, 70 centimeters, uh, 110 centimeters, and 30 centimeters is one one foot, right? So this is two feet, right? Three feet, and this is four feet. Uh, wait, 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 what? Two feet, three feet? Yeah, four feet will be something like this, okay? And the y-axis represents the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection as of April 19, 2020, uh, in each country or region, right? So this this is showing the correlation between the COVID-19 spread, the number, and social distance, right? And then the size of the circles represents the population of each. So, for example, this top data point is US. So the population, it says population is like uh, roughly uh, three, no, 300 million, no way, 300 million, right? And with 300 million, yeah, 300 million. Right, and U.S. has a lot of uh, cases. Uh, Part of the reason is it's it's big population. But also, if you compare it with China, China's here, yellow. uh, Of course, China has a bigger population, but still, U.S. has a lot of cases. But if you think about the social distance, right? Maybe it's the social distance that matters. For the number of the cases, uh, and then the colors, the color shows how quickly uh, the country or region uh, started social distancing once the, the first confirmed case appeared. Right. So, for example, China. Uh, in China, like. The first case was uh, confirmed in November, uh, but it started to act on uh, the epidemic uh, much later, like after uh, 2020 started. So it took a lot of time. But let's say the darker color, Turkey, days in between 16, 16, 16 days. So basically in Turkey, there was, there was only 16 uh, days between the day the first case was confirmed and the day, uh, actually, day the first case was confirmed and the day the social distancing was started, right? So, quicker action, right? And places like US, uh, Italy, Germany, there are somewhere in between. Um, then, 
if you take a look at this part, you know, this, so these countries or regions have, have like a little, relatively higher uh, cases than these countries, even though their population is much bigger than theirs, right? But still, if you look at the, those countries, they have very close uh, contact with people, right? So their social distance is pretty short, but the cases remain low, maybe because of the color, which means quick, quick actions. So from this uh, plot, we can observe two things. So social distance matters. Closer the social distance, uh, the higher the number of the infection. Uh, as of April 19th, but if those countries, even even those countries and regions, uh, if they take action really quick and start social distancing, then they can avoid uh, seeing a large number of uh, cases. So these two findings uh, equal to the fact that social distancing is very important. Uh, it concurs with uh, the recommendations by medical experts these days to stay away from each other. So this data, this plot shows, uh, actually they're right, uh, which is cool. But then, what's this? You know, where's this plot? Where's this plot from? Well. As I said in this blog, it's you, you know, because you're going to create this plot uh, following the steps explained here. Okay. So, uh, it's a long process, so I'm not going to talk about each step here. I mean, in the blog, it's explained, but in this video, I'm going to just go over and uh, in, in order to show you that uh, you can learn uh, how to visualize data like that using interactive map, uh, plot, uh, any kind of data, right? So first of all, uh, okay, in this section, friendly suggestion, I'm telling you that probably if you want to start uh, coding and doing data science with a computer, uh, maybe for your eyes, it's better to change the themes of your browser and also uh, Jupyter Notebook, if you're using it. Uh, and make it like really dark. Uh, and I explain how to do it. Okay. And then in this section, I'm uh, explaining what kind of data and from where they were taken uh, to make that plot um, at the top, right? So basically, yeah, uh, there are two groups of data I'm using here. Uh, first one is Johns Hopkins University's uh, COVID-19 data. We've been uh, sort of dealing with that uh, over the, the previous posts. But this time we're going to use time series data. They provide panel data to be precise, right? And the second group of data comes from this uh, 2017 study I found about social distance. Not social distancing, but the default social distance uh, in 42 locations. So I basically read this paper's figure and figured out, figure out uh, the, like how much social distance each country has and created a table and stored it here so you can take a look okay so these are two uh main data oh and there's one more actually then i also got data on how when when each location uh strengthened the restricted border control which I'm using as a proxy for the date for uh, serious social distancing, right? Because it's hard to 
find the data about when each country started social distancing seriously. Uh, and it's not like, yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, there are so many countries and different languages. So I start, I, I decided to use the border control as a proxy for the beginning of serious social distancing. All right. Uh, I'll describe it in more detail later. Anyway, so we're getting these data first using R, okay? So the first group of data, Johns Hopkins data, is in their uh, GitHub repository. And the table I created with the social distance data is also in GitHub in my account. So first of all, we get the data using R, okay? And this is the list of the commands I, I've used. So you can just follow step by step. And once you're done with this, then you generate uh, free, yeah, free CSV files on your desktop. So you're gonna use Excel to uh, manipulate those files uh, because you have to clean some data. And this time we're dealing with only three uh, CSV files. And the data inside have Instead of a lot of rows, a lot of columns. So I figured that this time automation, automation using SQL uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, actually, it would be much quicker to use Excel and do things manually. And uh, in the following, I explain how to do that step by step. Exactly in like 12 steps, right? And here. Uh, this paragraph talks about the the dates of when each place uh, restricted the border, right? So we get all the data, and then we can move on to the visualization part. And for the vis visualization, I I like I like using. Uh, what is called Plotly. Plotly is a software that can be um, programmed using either R or Python. Uh, and here, because we use R for data collection, here we're using Python for uh, working with Plotly, right? But to use Plotly, you have to uh, set your computer up for it. And here's the step-by-step uh, step -step guide for doing that right one two yeah and when you're done then i found this amazing article by elizabeth uh on how to use plotly to visualize whatever data you have actually i use this so i i'm referring uh to it so uh i'm not explaining everything here so if you want to know exactly what's going on uh, you can click on this link and visit her her blog uh, to understand what's going on. But anyway, uh, the commands we use uh, are right here, right? And when you're done, you'll have HTML file, and you can so basically visualization is done here. But also you can store it in your own GitHub account and embed that if you if you want to if you're doing a blog yourself or you, if you want to start a blog or if you want to uh share the dynamic you know interactive plot with somebody uh you can just store it in your github account if you don't have a github account wait have i been saying github github right github yeah i think in the previous videos i also said github it's GitHub. So in your GitHub account, you can store the uh, HTML file and then get this thing. And again, you can find this information in Elizabeth's uh, blog here. Okay. So you can do that. And then you're ready to either share your plot with people or embed your plot in some websites like mine 
Uh, so that's it. That's how you visualize and you know distribute the uh, the kind of you know, pretty pretty cool looking interactive figures. Okay, so uh, I started this blog with uh, discussions on COVID nineteen. Uh, using the data provided by Johns Hopkins University's GitHub repository. Uh, and so far we've done what, like data collection, data cleanup, and data visualization, right? And right now, I've also thought about doing some like statistical analysis of, of COVID data, but also it's still uncertain uh, when it comes to how the number is going to change in, in, the, in the coming uh, few months and maybe statistical analysis can be more interesting than them uh, rather than right now and also I didn't expect to see that much of clear uh, relationship between social distancing and uh, other variables with the number of the positive cases and when I saw it I felt kind of satisfied with how far we've been and for now I think uh, my study with COVID-19 is done like for for the time being maybe in the future I can take it up again and do some statistical analysis or even you know, machine learning uh, but yeah right now I think we got a pretty good result uh, doing this uh, I think this could have been published in a, an academic journal, uh, but I prefer uh, showing everything on the blog uh, in a unique format. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, like academic uh, jargon and like you know, somewhat uh, like sterile uh, style. If if you've been reading academic papers. Uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So I decided to do this here. Okay. And also, I, as, I, as I wrote in the about page of this blog, uh, I started this blog uh, mainly because I didn't, I didn't get a job after graduating from my uh, grad school last month. So I had a lot of time. That's why I started this. But... It's, it's gonna change. I'm getting a work which is really interesting for me. So, uh, I'm gonna spend some time on, on that, the work, but not full time, like few, a couple times a week. So what I'm gonna do is, from now on, because I'm so into that uh, field, I'm gonna upload this blog using examples uh, of that category, you know, and you'll see what it is uh, in the next post, I guess, or in a, in a couple of posts in the future. And I'm going to use data science to uh, get more insights about that industry. Okay. And you'll see more techniques. And I think I'm going to uh, start talking about statistics and econometrics so you'll see more updates in the future I'm not sure about the frequency of the updates but there will be future posts for sure so I'll see you in the next episode until then stay safe bye